trends are coming back. Uh, what uh, clearly um, we, we see is that uh, e-commerce has had much m- more recovery for obvious reasons. Um, you know, everyone was forced to go lock- in lockdown to forced to use e-com. So some of those categories across food and grocery, insurance, healthcare, some of those have seen natural spikes in e-com specifically. Um, as the face-to-face has come back again, uh, I think we are seeing the increase in uh, discount stores, electronics, some of the, the normal categories. I, I would say we are still on the path of recovery, but few categories have exceeded uh, their pre-COVID uh, growth rates. Um, so it's a really a mixed bag of it, but I think it'll be a while before we are fully out of it. If you look at digital payments, um, nearly um, e- evenly split between um, face-to-face and um, as card not present or e-com. Uh, I think there's been much more higher skew towards e-com because there weren't too many places to shop in face-to-face. Um, I think what we are seeing is that uh, that that swing that we had on too many e-com transactions are going to normalize a little bit, but predominantly still higher number of e-com transactions we see. Um, it would be hard to give you specific numbers of visa uh, in India, but as a market, um, I believe we have seen categories in payments grow as high as 40% uh, pre-COVID versus post-COVID. Now it's category by category play, like some categories have done and some have taken growth away from face to face and some have grown as new categories, right? And what I mean by that is there are some channels like food and grocery, right? You couldn't do face to face, so you push those spends online. That doesn't mean that people started spending more on uh, food and grocery, just meant that the shift happened from offline to online. But if you think of uh, bill payments and utilities as a category that moved from face to face to online, but also brought more first time digital users who were starting to pay their utility bills online. So that as a category grew, uh, but it's a mixed bag of the shift happening from offline to online, as well as new transactions coming online. To give you an example in contactless, for example, right? Um, because of this whole hygiene factor that has come in for face-to-face payments, a lot of people don't want to touch uh, or, or feel cash, right? Like it's just a hygienic factor. So in Asia Pacific, we see across Asia Pacific, right? We see 40% of our face-to-face transactions happening on contactless. Now that's a that's a pretty high number. So same in India, I mean, like we are seeing more and more transactions face-to-face will happen in contactless. Our challenge, of course, is right now, not many face-to-face options are available. So as, as those options become available, especially in restaurants and uh, fast food categories, I think uh, food and grocery and all that, we, we expect more penetration of contactless even in India. So, you know, uh, as a as an industry and as Visa, we've done a good job on the issuing side. There are enough contactless cards that our issuers are sending out. On the acceptance side, there is good uh, there is good uh, penetration of around two and a half million to close to three million now contactless terminals. But what we also realize is that we need to do more on that front. And then the regulator actually did a pretty uh, g- great job in introducing um, two things. One, they, they, they've set a mandate for driving acceptance infrastructure through a, uh, a development fund that the RBI has created to invest in acceptance in remote areas or acceptance of these form factors like contactless. So that's positive one. Second positive is you could only previously use contactless for less than 2000 rupees, right? So if, if it was above that amount, then it would ask you to dip the transaction or pay using alternate means. RBI has lifted that condition. So RBI has said, that even for greater than 2000 rupees, you can pay by tapping, but just enter your PIN instead of finding other ways to pay. So so there is no, so that friction has gone away. Now, there are a lot of players in the market, specifically acquirers, who have to be ready with these changes. So we, we have acquiring partners, banks who are now upgrading their terminals to program for this change, right? So, so that even above 2000 rupees, you can accept contactless card on those machines. Then we have these fintechs. Um, There are a bunch of these, so it'll be hard for us to name one or two, 
a bunch of these who are programming on tap to phone use cases. So what does that mean? Your phone, your standard Android device could accept a contactless payment. Now that's a big, big shift, right? So just imagine the penetration we have in our country for all the phones, all of them become contactless devices. So there, there are partners, a bunch of those came through our Visa Everywhere initiative. Some of those are, are, have been our FinTech partners for some time. So I think from enablement perspective, these are a couple of things, working with the regulator, working with FinTechs, that we are trying to push the ecosystem to drive more and more contactless. As a, as a network, we do process offline payments today, uh, not in India, but in many places we do that, right? Because <clears throat> depending on the use case, uh, offline parking meters in Europe, in many other developed countries, they're running on offline payment as a construct. In India, um, th that, that is something we are evaluating of participating in this pilot to prove some use cases um, that allow contactless payments in an offline uh, payment threshold that the RBI has set up, right? And for specific use cases, uh, so, we, so we can prove that out. What does it take for the ecosystem to enable that in India? You know, one of the things we rolled out last year was Visa SafeClick. And that's a classic example that where we leveraged our Bangalore teams, resources, our technology depth to design a product which uh, solves for some of the friction that happens in online commerce when you're paying with cards. So we designed a product that had more security and less friction and was able to balance it such that uh, there is a higher payment success rates that we can achieve um, and we can process these transactions in a much more seamless and secure way. And it has gotten a great traction with some of the large merchants like Flipkart, PhonePay, Paytm. Um, and this is an example of a product where You've kind of literally built a product grounds up in India for India. I mean, like, so you mentioned uh, Buildesk and Paymate. These are two of our uh, partners in India where we've invested. Um, you know, globally, we have invested in a lot of companies, as you might already know. Um, and uh, see, uh, I mean, like, it's, um, it's, it's, we don't have a VC type mentality of picking companies as investors, uh, it has to make commercial sense for us. Um, like it's very important for us to have a commercial partnership first that lends itself for us to believe that there is some reason for a long term investment versus the other way around. Um, so, you know, in terms of the sectors that matter uh, across retail and commercial payments, a lot of these uh, uh, companies, whether well, as the ecosystem expands to, um, you know, different value added services, um, data loyalty i think some of these plays uh, the, the 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 partners will become very interesting and we 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 partner with them with most of them today it's going to be hard to say where we would invest or not but i think commercially we are partnering with most of them in this, these spaces um, and uh, one last plug to the visa everywhere initiative actually is is one way in which we have expanded the partnership uh, horizon right so we used to wait for partners to come to us uh, Visa Everywhere initiative was one where we actually went out and did an outreach um, to, 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 to get the message out that Visa is ready for the business and here is how we can give you platform assets, technology, global reach, and mentorship. This Visa Everywhere initiative is one of the very few programs where we have a hands-on mentorship for Indian fintechs where we delivered that and selected the top nine in India out of 460 applicants. Uh, in India. So I think a lot of these partnerships will dovetail into uh, commercial partnerships.